Hi guys, welcome back to Ejuit channel. So today's video is about pneumonia. So pneumonia in animals. So we have seen in pet practice and also large animal practice, pneumonia was a very big problem in animals. So there are many causes that will lead to pneumonia or pneumonic problems and all. So the treatment and identification and diagnosis of pneumonia is little bit difficult. So we will be discussing about several facts of pneumonia in this video. So if you haven't subscribed our channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. So definition, so inflammation of the lung tissue that usually preceded by bronchitis. So first of all, the bronchus will be infected, then it will be leading to the alveoli and the lung tissue. So that is already termed as the bronchopneumonia. So it is clinically characterized by fever will be there due to the rise of endopyrogenous substances in the blood, coughing will be there, dyspnea will be there and hypoxemia will be there because lung is the tissue who has to take oxygen from the atmosphere and distribute it to the blood. So hypoxia will be there whenever the lung function is not properly happening then coughing and all will be there like it will be affecting the lung tissue. So there are many predisposing factors that will make the etiological agent a great successful problematic thing in the lung infection. So those are the environmental exposure to dust and smoke, secondary to the heart diseases that are if that all heart failure is there, lung problem is very common. Factors lowering the defense mechanism of animals such as the stress and all. So whenever the animal is in highly stressful condition, the immune system will be very weak. If the immune system is very weak means the defense mechanism will be very less and the susceptibility to the many disease or any other infectious agents will be very much increased. So infectious causes are mainly due to the viral pneumonia that is whenever canine distemper virus is infecting the dogs, the dogs will be having severe interstitial pneumonia as well as bronchopneumonia. Then canine adenovirus type 1 and type 2. So this will be causing infectious canine hepatitis and all. But also whenever the animal is suffering from canine hepatitis and all, the animal will be having transient fever, cough and dyspnea. Next is para-influenza virus. They will be attacking the bronchus and they will be producing bronchopneumonia. So next other things are the complicated feline upper respiratory tract infections. So in case felines, the upper respiratory tract is more prone to the infectious agents and other etiological agents. So whenever these etiological agents come directly into the upper respiratory tract of an immunocompromised animal, the defense mechanism will be very weak and those ins or those etiological agents can simply attack the cells and they will be producing the causes. So the parasitic pneumonia will be mainly through the lungworms, or strong alias can be there, many lungworms are there from the migration of other worms through the lung. So hepatic migration, migration to the lung are always present in the Toxocara species. So that will be producing the verminous pneumonia. New worms will be producing pneumonia that is also known as verminous pneumonia. Next is bacterial pneumonia which is a very common case that is primary infection by Pastorella multosuda, Escherichia coli, Streptococcal species, Klebsiella species, Staphylococcus species etc. So secondary to severe kennel cough, particularly in young puppies, kennel cough is actually caused by Bordetella bronchiseptica and many para-influenza viruses, etc. That is actually the problem of upper respiratory tract and also the bronchus. The animal will be having cough and the kennel will be the source for the infection and the young puppies will even die due to the kennel cough. So next is allergic pneumonia. That means the animal may be allergic to some pollen, some dust. So, or some other particles which are present in the plants and all. Next is fungal pneumonia. So mainly cochidioidomycosis mitis and cryptococcus neoformans are the main two fungus that will be producing pneumonia. And sometimes aspiration pneumonia will be also there. That is due to secondary to the megaesophagus or improperly administered medicine that is oil herbarium or forced feeding or improper suckling without the cleft palate problems and all that will be leading to the direct milk accumulation in the lungs or in the alveoli that will lead to hypoxemia because the transportation of oxygen will not be proper 
and those milk will be having severe bacterial flora those flora will be attacking the endothelial cells of the alveoli and the alveolar blood vessels and all that will be producing severe bronchopneumonia so clinical signs will be rapid breathing will be there tachypnea respiratory distress will be there due to the problems with the alveoli and bronchos problem pneumonia productive cough that is cough is frequent painful and in the final stage they can produce severe paroxysm and become exhausted rapidly and they will be producing sputum and all sputum will be containing dead cells bacteria and other fibrinous materials fever will be there due to the bacterial toxins produced in the blood and they will be uh, producing or activating the endogenous pyrogens and to remove those things the body will be alarmingly increasing the body temperature depression will be there mucopurulent nasal discharge will be there so these are very common things which are seen in any of the bacterial or infectious agent produced diseases so next is the anorexia will be there uh, so animal will not be feeding properly restlessness will be there weight because whenever they are not feeding the weight loss will be there and exercise intolerance will be there sometimes the tongue gums and lips may appear bluish that is actually due to cyanosis and we can hear the lung sounds are often abnormal it crackle up whenever we are going for the auscultation procedure we can just see the crackle sound with the lens so animal will be depressed very much so we have to give love and care to the animal whenever they are in the depressed phase so sometimes nebulization with good agents bronchodilators and all will be very good for the animal health so animal will be having uh, drooling saliva in proper feeding will not be there so that means that will be getting a very bad condition to the animal's health and the animal will be prone to the external parasites because of less feeding so next is the unilateral nasal discharge you can see the animal is having cbpp contagious bovine pleuro pneumonia so whenever the animal is with pneumonia that will be having marbled lung appearance in the postmortem lesions in cbpp so bilateral thick Pustular discharge will be there whenever the infection is with the pus producing bacteria like Staphylococcus and Streptococcus infection or sometimes it can be also due to the other bacterial infection that can be producing yellow pus, thick creamy pus. So diagnosis is through the case history, clinical signs or lab exam we can go for complete blood count. So whenever the WDC or the neutrophils are very much high we can see that there has been an inflammation or an infection. Next is airway cytology. So whenever the airway cells are heavily keratinized, we can see that some problem has happened in the airway. Next is culture, that is tracheal wash cytology. So we can see by the tracheal wash culture, we can see whichever bacteria are present, whichever fungus are present, whichever agent are present, and we can selectively take the antibiotic and proper treatment. Next is chest X-rays. Whenever we are going for chest X-rays and all, we can see the X-ray image of the chest. We can see the proper functioning of the lens and all through the diagnosis through the chest x-rays. So next is the treatment. First of all is the hygienic treatment that is give plenty of fluids, warm and rest. Next is medicated treatments or antibiotics for at least three weeks or longer. Humidified oxygen for animals that have trouble breathing. Airway humidification. Percussion to the thorax to help loosen and remove secretions. Massaging. Expectorants, bronchodilators and tough suppressants can be given. So proper feeding can be given intravenous or you can go for intravenous glucose administration and all if at all the animal is weak. So thank you.